In my lesson about parents, I neglected to mention that there is one function that you need to use if you want to have overlapping events. Let's just look in here and these are the four functions I want to go over in this lesson. Event inherited is the one that involves parents. This function will call the current event of the parent object of the instance. Okay, so that sounds complicated, but let's just look at what it actually is. I'll comment that out. In the parents video, I used a parent called enemies, and I had two Space Invader sprites, and I just created them as children to that parent. So I've done the same here. Now the problem is, if you create a parent object, and it has an event, in this case we'll use create, and inside I want to set the HP to 100. So every enemy will have 100 HP. Okay, that's simple. But what happens if I also want to create an event inside one of the children? Well, what normally happens is GameMaker looks at the parent, it sees the create event, it goes, okay, HP 100, and then it looks at the child and says, oh wait, another create event. Okay, I'll just ignore the create event in that parent and just execute what's in this one instead. Well, that's not what we want. We want it to execute the create event that's in the parent, but we also want it to execute the create event in the children. So to show you as an example, I've got the parent object showing HP equals 100. And then I've got object one is going to try to make HP equals 60. So let's see what happens when I have two conflicting events with parents and children. So in my game, you can see that I have 60 for my health, not 100, because what happened was GameMaker saw that the parent wanted 100 health in the create event, but then looked at the child and said, wait, there's another create event. I'll just use that one instead. And we don't want that to happen. So what we use is something called event inherited. This makes sure that it inherits whatever was inside the event of this parent object and then apply other whatever code you have inside this create event. So now it'll look at HP equals 100 and HP equals 60. Now, of course, that'll overwrite it again because it'll look at 100 and then look at 60 and reset it. But if I comment that out, HP should still work. There we go. See, now the HP is 100 because it adopted it from the parent event. And then, even though I have another similar event in the child, I used event inherited and I got to use both. So that's just something to add on to your understanding of parents, that if you want your parents and children to use the exact same event, you have to use event inherited before just so that GameMaker will understand you want to use both. Now, moving on, we've got event perform. This is really cool. This performs a given event of the calling instance, and it takes two arguments, a type and a number. Now, I'll show you what that means in object one. Here in global left pressed, I've got event perform. Now, what you do is you select an event, and then what's called number, it's the sub portion of the event. Some events require a second argument. Now, I'm going to go into the manual here, and I'll show you this is where you need to go if you're going to be using event perform, because these are absolutely every single event argument you would need to use. So it just mimics the events we already know, like event create, destroy, step, and see this, when we get into the italicized ones, these are the arguments that go into the second argument, the one that says num or number. Because if you were to do something like event alarm, you would actually use a number, 0 through 11. So here are all of them. There are a lot. If you find one that does not have a number, like event create, just throw in a zero. That's noted up here to say that just throw in a zero and you're fine right here. Otherwise, just use zero. But in this case, I'm going to perform an event. So global left pressed, if I press anywhere on my left click on my mouse, anywhere in the room, I'm going to act as if event collision with object two took place. Now I've got that event that's important, you need that. Here's my collision event. Here's what I mean, pull that out. Here's what I mean when you click on collision. This is the subsection, this is the second argument. So it would be collision, object two. 
That's the event I've got here. And inside, all I'm doing is minusing 10 away from my current HP. HP minus equals 10. So that would happen normally if I collide with object 2. But in this case, if I left click, I'm going to act as if it actually happened, but it didn't. So here's what it looks like. So here we go, we've got object 1, object 2, and they're not colliding, they're totally not near each other, and they both have 100 health. But if I left click, I've lost 10 health. Because what I did is call that code block for collisions, the event collision with object 2, and GameMaker just read whatever was inside and then performed that action. So that's a great way to pull the code out of one of your events, even though the event actually hasn't taken place. It's as if I took this code block right here and put it in my left press. You're just calling it from another event. Really cool way to do it. You can also do this from another object. We've got event perform object. This takes one additional argument, it just wants to know which object to look inside, then it will find the event and the sub-event, otherwise known as num or number. So in this case, oh, let me comment that out. In this case, I've used it for global right press. I've got event perform object. I'm going to select object 2, kind of the only object in the room, the only other one, and I'm going to access the event key release. Let me just show you before I do that. This is the drop-down of all the events, so you can still... Really, you don't have to memorize any of them, you can actually just use this drop-down. So, I'm going to go down to Key Release, and then the subsection of that is VK, Virtual Key Space. I want to use the Space Key. So, whenever I globally right-press my mouse, I'm going to act as if Object 1 had used the event key release space from object 2. Now let's see what that does. We'll hop into object 2. Here's release space. And we're going to say HP minus equals 20. Now normally if I were to press the space button or perhaps release it, object 2 would lose 20 health. But since object 1 is accessing this code, it's actually going to affect object 1 and I'll show you what I mean. So we've got both of our objects. Now if I press the space bar and release it, there we go. Object 2 lost 20 health. That's exactly what we expect to happen. But if I right click, I'm going to do event perform object, access object 2, and access the same event, releasing the space key. And here's what happens. Object 1 lost 20 health. See, so even though object 2 holds that particular code, event perform object takes that code from the other object and applies it to the object that is calling this particular code. So that's a cool way to just pull code from anywhere. You can pull code from yourself from a different event using event perform or you can do event perform object and pull code from any other object. Now there's one other cool thing you can do with events. Down here I've got event user, and this just requires a number. This will call one of the 16 user-defined events. If you go to add event, and you go into this diamond called other, you get this cool drop-down of kind of niche events. But at the very bottom, we've got user-defined, and you're allowed up to 16 user-defined events. These will never call. There's nothing to trigger these particular events in your game. GameMaker allows you to create your own event. The only way to call upon a user-defined event is to specifically state that somewhere in code inside another event, which could be the step event, so it's just checking for it all the time. But, so we can see it in slow motion, I've put it in global left pressed. Let's comment out event perform and instead do event user zero. It's as simple as that, you just say which one you're going to call. So I'm calling event user zero, and here it is, user defined zero, and inside my HP will minus equal 50. So I'm just going to remove 50 health from my current health. So here's what happens when I left press. We've got our two objects here, both at 100 health, and if I left click, there we go. I've lost 50 health from object one. So if you find that any of these events don't really suit your needs and you want to define your own event, 
there it is, user defined event, and you call upon it by using event user and then the number. This is actually important if you put something that's going to happen multiple times to one of your objects, and then you can just keep calling upon it without having to rewrite that code in different places inside your object. Similar to how you would write a script and have different objects access the same script, even though all you had to do was write that code one time and then everyone gets to use it. So kind of a way of making your games a lot simpler. So just to recap, we've got event inherit. That's to make sure that you can use the same event from both a parent and child. We've got event perform. This allows you to perform a different event from inside a different event. We've got event perform object. Same thing as event perform, but you call from another object. And then event user, which allows you to use user defined events.